This week on Inside Boulder News, redevelopment efforts at Boulder Junction mark a significant milestone. The FreeWave Technologies event highlights new opportunities in the unmanned systems industry and volunteers help open another popular city park. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, I'm Mike Benuelos. The southwest section of the new Pearl Parkway Multiway Boulevard between 30th Street and Junction Place is now open. The city made this exciting announcement last week, signifying the latest milestone in a redevelopment project dedicated to innovative and sustainable construction methods. You can both uh, travel on your car in those through lanes as well as go into the multi-way boulevard shared space, either walking or bicycling, or if you're um, parking on street, you'll be able to do that now too, and then access the, the new residential properties or the commercial space nearby. Innovative improvements in other public-private projects are scheduled through next summer at Boulder Junction. For the latest updates, visit the Boulder Junction project website. We know them more commonly as drones, and this week the Boulder-based FreeWave Technologies hosted an event to promote awareness about the unmanned systems industry. Advancements in regulations and civilian applications within the industry could have a big economic impact on Colorado as well as the city of Boulder. In the past, unmanned systems have been used primarily in military applications, but now they're proving to be beneficial in a variety of ways for civilians. For decades, FreeWave Technologies has called Boulder home. It's where they make radios to help customers transmit critical information. Their radios are an important tool in the unmanned systems industry. This week, FreeWave brought together industry professionals to discuss the present and the future. We're not weaponizing these systems. They're going to find our lost children. They're going to deliver medicine to places that can't afford to have a helicopter standby to do it. And we're also going to help law enforcement find the bad guys when they're hiding in the dark. They're suited for the dull, dirty, and dangerous tasks that you don't want to use a manned aircraft for. At Boulder, we have one of the most comprehensive science unmanned aircraft programs. We have flown missions to study tornadoes in the plains. We've flown missions in the Arctic to study the ice. We've flown missions in Peru to study the atmospheric boundary layer. These emerging tools could also bring more money and jobs to the state of Colorado. There are projections that there, this is a billion dollar industry for domestic commercial use of unmanned aircraft. Ooh, that was fast. Ten seconds around the Projections can't turn into actual dollars until the unmanned aircraft industry faces several problems, including regulation. Right now, our unmanned aircraft has to follow the exact same rules as a Boeing 747. The Federal Aviation Administration has a deadline to create regulations and technical requirements for the unmanned aircraft industry by 2015. Colorado has applied to be one of six test sites across the U.S. to provide data that will help guide the regulation process. I think in terms of the regulatory side and the industry side, the announcement of these FAA test sites is probably the most important event that everyone's waiting to see. Uh, certainly on our research side, there are other things happening, and so this isn't the only thing, but that will have far-reaching impact you know, nationwide, and so everyone's very anxious to see where these test sites will be. Oh, nicely done. CU Boulder has offered a variety of courses since 2003 dedicated to the development and application of unmanned vehicle systems. To find out more about the university's programs, log on to recuv.colorado.edu. A beloved city park along the Boulder Creek Path is open again for the first time since the September floods, thanks to hundreds of volunteers. Last weekend, more than 300 volunteers participated in a two-day cleanup project at the Eben G. Fine Park. So this is one of our parks that got hit the hardest. It just had a lot of water and debris that we needed to get rid of before we could open it, just silt and sand. Some people cleaning the beach, some people were hard hauling the uh, safety wood surfacing to the playground, some people were along the bank, uh, cleaning up the bank, along the trail, cleaning the trail off so we could get that open, just hauling all the branches up. We had a wood chipper in the parking lot. It was snowy, wet, we still had the support. Everybody still came out. It's not just the city staff, but it also involves community businesses, uh, donating materials, helping to get things organized, actually donating staff time. It involves the volunteers. This is one of our parks that has a real draw for people, a real special place in people's heart. And we had people come up to us all day thanking us for getting this park open because it means so much to the community as park. For the latest on flood cleanup and closures, log on to boulderfloodinfo.net. Downtown Boulder business has heralded Halloween again this year, inviting flocks of costumed children and more than a few adults to the Pearl Street Mall for the annual Munchkin Masquerade. 
participating businesses opened up their sometimes spooky but always welcoming storefronts, passing out candy and other treats in a safe, family-friendly environment. Well, Downtown Boulder Inc., part of our mission is to uh, produce events that enhance uh, people's experience of Boulder and Downtown Boulder. And what could be more Boulder than thousands of people, kids and adults, dressed up in costume trick-or-treating? This tradition continues to grow a little each year with more and more businesses participating. This year, visitors were invited to start their routes on the east and west ends of the mall to make their journey more varied and to extend their fun. As we close this week's edition, I'm excited to welcome a new face to Inside Boulder News. Ashley Prill is joining us as our new lead anchor. Ashley comes to us from Summit County, where she was an anchor and producer for TV8. As you may remember, I was filling in as a temporary anchor, and now I'll pass the iPad on to Ashley. Thank you so much, Mike. I'm so excited to be here in Boulder. It's such a dynamic community with so many great stories to tell, and I look forward to working with all of you and sharing your stories each week. And Mike, I hope that we can count on you to come and join us every now and then. Of course, you can't get rid of me that easily, but why don't you go ahead and do us the honors of giving us the close this week? Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching Inside Boulder News. Stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter by submitting news tips and questions. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click on subscribe.